This is an investigator uh, sponsored trial that we are doing at MD Anderson. It's it's just us, uh, and this is uh, this has been actually going on for a few years, and frankly serves as the basis for uh, Celgene and BMS's uh, decision to explore Luspiracept in this area. So let me clarify a bit. Uh, uh, you know, shed some light on these drugs. Uh, they are a novel class uh, of drugs. So Tadercept is actually the first in class. So these drugs, so Tadercept and Luspiracept, they are uh, what is called active and receptor ligand traps. So these drugs basically trap or sequester uh, ligands belonging to the TGF beta superfamily uh, that bind to the active in receptor. So uh, by trapping those ligands, they prevent their binding to the active in receptor and thereby prevent the downstream signaling which goes through the SMAD pathway, et cetera. So ultimately what these ligands do is that they suppress or inhibit the terminal stages of erythropoiesis. And if you trap or sequester these ligands, you help promote erythroid maturation by removing that inhibitory influence. So that's the mechanism of action. And like I said, it sort of began with sotatercept. And since then, losparercept has been taken forward in this space and is already FDA approved in beta thalassemia and MDS with uh, uh, also encouraging results in myelofibrosis from last year's ASH. So coming back to our study with sotatercept, again, the two drugs are very similar. So uh, with our study with sotatercept, we uh, you know, uh, had... Uh, had three types of patients, um, uh, those who uh, don't require any transfusions, those who uh, require transfusions here and there, you can call that occasional, and those who are frankly transfusion dependent by formal criteria. So we allowed all these patients, and then we had two cohorts, one in which sotatercept was used alone and one in which it was added on to patients who have been on ruxolitinib at a stable dose and are anemic or, 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 or requiring transfusions, like I was just saying. So, um, so those two, these are the two cohorts. And overall, bottom line, our response rate is around 30%. Uh, right around 30% for both the cohorts. Uh, uh, actually, the, 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 uh, the actual numbers are uh, just slightly different from that in the abstract, but right around 30% for both uh, um, the, um, uh, uh, the monotherapy, sotatercept alone, and the sotatercept added to ruxolitinib. And remember, when I say response rate, I'm talking about a composite response rate that includes both anemia responses and transfusion independence responses. So we had both types of responses actually. Uh, in our combination cohort, all the responses were anemia responses, whereas in the monotherapy cohort, we had responses both uh, in anemia and in transfusion independence. Uh, and again, uh, sort of goes without saying, but for the transfusion dependent patients, a response meant becoming transfusion independent. And for patients who are just anemic or requiring occasional transfusions, for them, a response meant uh, getting a one and a half gram uh, increase in hemoglobin sustained over 12 weeks. This is pretty standard. Uh, and yeah, th so th the toxicity was very good. It's a very well-tolerated drug. I mean, really no major concerns regarding, regarding that. Uh, so I think it's just, uh, you know, another, um, uh, you know, potential armamentarium, uh, uh, another potential weapon in the armamentarium for anemia and myelofibrosis, which is a difficult area. You know, currently we only use uh, things like danazol, low-dose uh, thalidomide or uh, ESAs. And so this can, this class of agents can prove uh, a very useful uh, new addition uh, in that regard.